So let's talk about this math tutor program. You can see the flow chart. Hopefully you've already looked at it and you've run through the other video lecture so you can see what the program is supposed to do. We want everything to be random. So except for asking them how many problems they want and you could even make that random if you wanted to. The way it's set up, you're going to ask the user how many program problems do they want to solve and then everything else is going to be random. So you're going to get random numbers to be part of the math equation and you're going to get a random operation. Well, you know you can't really get a random operation, so you're going to get a random number and then make a selection. One would be addition, two subtraction, three multiplication, four division. So you just you have to use a random number, but then you can assign each number to be an operation. We're going to need to get the actual answer. We're going to need to show what the equation is and get input from the user. So we've kind of chunked everything. And then we're going to have, if they're right, we say correct. And if they're not right, then we say they're not correct. And we also want to tell them what the correct answer is. So if we kind of break everything down, and that's you know really a big part of programming is to break it down. We're helping you out right now since you're beginners. So we've got everything broken down. Now can you take these steps and actually translate them into the Python programming? So we're going to kind of take tackle this problem head on. Now we know that we're going to need random, so I'm going to just change my input statement to import random. And we know we're going to be using a bunch of functions. Let's just start off, I'm not even going to call it a main function because that's going to come later. But the suggestion here for the flowchart is that we have a function called um, math equation. So let's go ahead and get that started. I'm going to start without any parameters. Now eventually you'll probably come back in and put some. Right now, I want this to be a standalone function, let it do its job, and then when I'm ready, I can put it into the main function and put it and loop it. But we want to do incremental development. Let's just start with one thing at a time, get it to work, and then build on that. So you can always go back to where it last worked if you need to. If you try doing everything and then run it and something doesn't work, it's like, where do you go? So we're just going to start small and work our way through it. So the first thing we want to do is get some random numbers. I'm just going to use X and Y. That's not super descriptive, so saying num1, num2 would probably be better. But I'm just going to take the easy way out and say X and Y. So we're going to do random dot rand range. Now if you remember anything about rand range, rand range, the first number that you put there will be included, but not the last one. So for my first number, I do want it to include 0, and I want it to go up to 10. So do I do 10? That will give me 0 to 9. So just like with our for loops, it's not going to include the second number, so always have, we always have to go one above. So this will give me a random number between 0 and 10. Now I'm going to do another random number for y. And this time I do not want to include 0. Why? Because it could be a division problem, and I do not want to have division by 0. So I'm going to make it 1 to 10. So I really put in 1 to 11. Now my next variable, over here in the flowchart I said z, but that's really not descriptive. It is going to be for my operation, what type of math equation is it. So I'm just going to put pop for our operation. And it's going to be a random number. Is it going to be 1 to 10? Well, think about it. How many operations do you have? 4. So you can do 0 to 3 or 1 to 4. I'm just going to do 1 to 4. So do I put 4 there? Nope. Think about it. I always have to go one more. So I've got my three random numbers, and that part was pretty simple. But now what I need to do is calculate the answer. So if I've decided that one's addition, two subtraction, so on and so forth, I do need to have an if statement at this point. So if op equals equals one, what does that mean? It's going to be addition. So my answer, I'm going to go ahead and throw in a variable here, is going to be x plus y. Now, I can just do a whole LF structure. So what if op equals equals 2? What's it going to be? How about subtraction? So I think you can see where we're going from here. And you can probably go ahead and finish up your statement while I sit here and type. I'm going to let 3 be um, multiplication. And then I don't have to do another condition. I just have four choices, so my last one will be division. Okay, 
So I've got my function there. I mean, I've got my operation code. So I've got my x, my y, my operation. I've calculated the answer. Now this is kind of, I can see that my function is going to get pretty long. So I know I'm going to, at some point, I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it into another function. The next thing is to do the equation. This can be a little bit tricky because we haven't done a lot with strings yet. But if the operation is addition, then somewhere along the line, I need to actually say addition. We need to have it in some kind of a string. So we are going to introduce um, an empty string. Well, it won't be empty for long. But I do need to some way of saying addition, subtraction, multiplication. So I could throw in another variable at this point. Let's just say x for equation. And it's going to be a string, so I'm going to put plus. Oops. And then I can do that for here, minus, addition, I mean multiplication, division, and then I can form an equation. So I can do this, and there's nothing really wrong with doing this, except for that, you know, somewhere kind of in the back of your mind, you know, I'm going to make this into a function. And we've been studying functions in this chapter, and really each function should just do one thing. So my first function is just going to get the answer. The second thing that I wanted to do is to form a string for the equation. So that's the second thing. So although I could go ahead and put it in this one if statement and say, well, that's brevity, you know, instead of duplicating my code, I'm just going to throw everything in there. And that's really great. But then you have two things to return. And although we've done functions that re have returned more than one thing, in most programming languages, and just kind of as a general rule, functions do one thing. That's the black box. It does one thing and it does it really well. And computers don't really get bored or really care about duplication a lot. I care because I want you to have your code be as succinct as possible. But sometimes the best way to do it is just to duplicate. So I'm actually going to do this again. I'm going to have a second if statement. It's going to be exactly the same. But instead of doing an answer, here I'm going to do my, my ek, my equation. So I am going to separate it. This is going to be the best way to chunk my code. So go ahead and fix up your code so you're going to have two if statements instead of just one. So I hope I've explained to your satisfaction why we're going to do two separate ones. Each one is going to become its own function. And each function should just do one thing. So even though it looks like duplication, and I always tell you, take out duplication in your code, this isn't really duplication. This is going to be two separate functions that are going to work similarly, but they have different tasks. So we've calculated the answer. We've only done the first part of the equation. The next part is to actually form this equation. So I'm going to make my equation. So I'm going to go ahead and spell it out. And we haven't worked a lot with strings. So just kind of remember, use your conversion function. So x and y are integers right now. And I need to make them strings. So I'm going to use the string conversion function, str. And then instead of commas, commas are great for printing, but they're not great for strings. So you use your plus. So plus in with a string means concatenate or join. So I'm going to join these different things. So this makes my integer a string. Now my equation is already, my ek is already a string. So I'm just going to say plus ek. Plus, and then I want to make my y a string. And then if I want to add an equals, I might do something like this. So I'm going to create a string by putting all these different parts together. Okay, so this is a string variable, and its value is all this. Now, if I want to include spaces in between there, I actually have to put in the spaces. So I'm going to do something like this. Space plus, and then I'm going to put in space plus, and then I can put in the space right here. So that'll just make my string a little bit more readable, but you actually have to put in the spaces and quotation marks if you want to include them. And then just use a whole bunch of pluses. So we've kind of divided this up here. This looks like this could be a great function because my function is getting pretty long here. Math equation is getting pretty long. We want it to create lots of small functions that act like black boxes. Just return what it is that it does. So if this section right here is going to return an answer. That's what it does. Let's go ahead and make this into a function. Return the answer. There we go. And let's make this into a function. 
return this string equation. There we go. So what can we call these? Well, this one is getting an answer. So let's just go ahead and call it get answer. And will I need some parameters? Well, let's just kind of leave it like this now, and we can come back and answer that question. So I'm going to take this code, I'm going to cut it, and I'm going to paste it. So we see that we have op, and we have answer x and y. Okay. Well, which ones of these do, does answer, get answer need in order to work? Okay. Does it need to have, know what op is? Yes. Does it need to know x, and does it need to know y? It needs to know all of those things. What about answer? Well, that's what it's finding. So this is a local variable to this function, but op and x and y, they need to come from the main island here. So I'm going to need to pass them in. Now the order doesn't really matter, but you have to be consistent. So whatever order I put for my parameter, I have to put the same order down here when I call it for the argument. So let's just put x, y, op. I've created this function. Everything should work good. I haven't tested it yet, but it should work good. And now I need to call it. So I'm going to get answer and I'm going to do a return function call, which means it has to be part of a statement. And it's called get answer, and it has three arguments, and I'm just going to put them in the same order. So I created a return function. I put in its parameters. I called this return function, and I used the arguments. Okay, so let's do the same thing for this section down here. I'm going to create another one, and maybe we just call this one get equation. And will it need parameters? Well, we'll find out. Let's go ahead and get our code up there. Okay, so does it need op? Okay, it does. Now, does it need my x and y? So those are values that started down here. It just needs to be shared up here. So let's just use the same parameters. And I'm going to use the same order for consistency. Do I need to put in ec? That's going to be a local variable just for this function. Do I need to put in equation? Once again, that's a local variable just for this function. But I do need to return. So one thing I forgot to do up here, and hopefully you caught that, I need to return my answer. So what do I need to do here? I need to return my equation. So then here, I need to call it. It's if this is a return function, it needs to be part of a statement, so it's going to be similar. And it has arguments. Alright, so we just did all this part right here. Was it too complicated? And we've got three nice functions. We've got right now, this is a nice void function, and we've got two return functions that get called. Now we need to get input from the user. We're used to using the input statement. So I want to get, I don't want to call it answer. Answer is already right here. So I'm just going to call it guess. So what is the user's guess? And normally we do an int because we want to make it an integer. But I would just caution you since we are using division, and division is always going to be a decimal. So instead of using int, let's use float. I still need to use the input statement, and here normally we've typed in our prompt. We've asked the question, like, what is your answer? What is your guess? But they don't know what the equation is. They have not, the user has not seen the x or the y or the operation. So, this is kind of where the neat thing comes in. This is where our equation comes in. This is a string, and the prompt is always a string. So I actually am not going to use quotation marks or anything. I'm just simply going to print for my prompt the string variable equation. It's going to take the string that you created and print it for the prompt. So that's going to look pretty cool. So we can just try it even to that point. Let's just see if it works. Now I haven't finished it yet, but actually I can test anywhere along the line. We don't want to go too long without testing. So let's call math equation and let's hope that we have no errors. Don't forget your parentheses and your function form. Okay, so this is pretty cool because there's our string right there. So you see what we did here? This, and this, and this, and this. We created this string. So what is 1 minus 1? It is 0. Now it's not going to tell me the results because I haven't programmed that. But I've gotten pretty far. So this is really as far as I want to take it with you. What you need to do next is do your if statement and print correct or print incorrect and display the correct answer. Get all this to work correctly. 
And the next step is to actually do a main function where you can ask how many problems do they want and use a for loop to call math equation that many times. Then when you get ready, get all that to work correctly, then you can worry about displaying the end results. So in the end, how many did they have correct and what was the percent? And the best way to do that was probably to do another function. So you're going to pass in some more parameters, but have some kind of a print results function at the end. If so, then you've really got this functions, parameters, and arguments thing down, breaking up your code. So no function should be very many lines. Okay, everything's short and sweet, works great. You should have all the building tools that you need to get this program done.